what lens are you viewing things from now as you pursue new things, given the experiences and the things you've learned? Yeah, I'll, I'll go like theoretical and then I'll go actually, you know, practical. Theoretically, I just want to work on cool things with cool people. I, I know that like that sounds trite in and of itself, but I'm grateful that I'm in the position where I don't have to work anywhere that I don't want to work ever again. I, I'm not rich enough where I can buy an island, but I'm rich, I, you know, I have enough money where I can be selective with where I put my time, which is awesome. That's huge. So, so the lens through which I look now is like, is this something I'm excited about? Is this with somebody that I want to spend my, my energy, my human capital with? Um, practically speaking, Chris and I kind of look at it through some broad lenses. <clears throat> the first one being, you know, do we have a competitive advantage in this space? And there's four kind of key areas that we think about competitive advantages. Uh, time. So like, do we have more time to throw at this than anybody else? Is it, it, there are businesses where you literally just need to put invest the time into it and it will be successful, but people give up along the way because time is, it's hard. It's hard to stay consistent. We're kind of at the point where we don't actually have any competitive advantages around time anymore. So I might have to throw that category out. Um, but the, the second area is capital. If it we're buying something in particular, do, could we move quickly when it comes to cash? Do we have uh, a reserve where we can throw $20,000 at an idea, right? Is there, is there an advantage from our perspective where using the cash or the capital that we have can give us an advantage over somebody who might not have it. The third area is expertise. So is this a business or a market where we have asymmetric ex expertise? We're, we're smarter than, or we have more experience than somebody else who doesn't know that market. RV parks would be an example for Chris. Healthcare would be an example for me, right? Um, and then the fourth area is distribution. Do we have an unfair competitive advantage in distribution? Um, and so, is it a media accelerated business? Can we use the, I don't know where we're at, 300,000 followers that we have combined across social media platforms to accelerate this business? Um, and then from there, we look at the person. Okay, is this somebody that we want to work with? Do we have an operator for it? Because we're not trying to we're not trying to get in and operate these businesses on a granular level. We're trying to partner with operators. So cool. It may tick all those boxes, but if we don't have an operator for it, we're not going to do it because that would mean one of us has to do it. And that's just something that we have, we have said, we're not doing it. Like we're not going to go and operate these businesses um, individually. So th th that's like the, I guess, five criteria that we look at in terms of actually going in and being interested in a business. Then the types of businesses, they're either going to be um, disruptable, like significantly accelerated by artificial intelligence or, not going to be disrupted at all by artificial intelligence. And I'll give you two examples. One of those would be tree trimming. How is tree trimming going to be impacted by artificial intelligence? I don't see yeah. a future in, in the next 10 years where tree trimming is significantly disrupted by artificial intelligence. There's still going to be people going out there. Maybe like, maybe like I'm trying to think, as you say, maybe like trying to figure out where the most trees could be damaged in a storm or something. Like, I don't know if you had a model totally. that could like, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. On the, on the business development side. Sure. Marketing yeah. side. Yeah. I think there's going to be pieces there, but like the fundamental. Right. Delivery yeah, of that service. Have, probably I, not robots at least soon cutting down trees. Yet. Maybe. No, not, not in our yet. lifetime. I, I don't think in the next 10 years. And then there's like the other side of the spectrum, healthcare. I don't think healthcare is going to be eliminated by artificial intelligence. I think it's going to be accelerated by artificial intelligence. So is there something mm. we can do in that space to take advantage of the move? Um, and so like all of these administrative positions that I think are going to be potentially eliminated, is there something we could do in that space? I don't really want to play as much in like the CPA, uh, fractional CFO, legal, like a lot of these agency businesses that I think will be automated away and then within the next 10 years, because then it's like, it's just a race to the bottom um, at that right. point. And I, I, we don't really want to be in those spaces. So that's kind of how we look at what types of businesses we may want to invest in.